Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here today. Um, I am talking about arc faults, AFCIs, electricians' most favorite subject and homeowners who like to freak out over price. Um, bottom line, it uh, this is my newest updated video. I did one a few years ago and got good and bad reviews from people about it, but uh, needless to say, unless you're an uh, electrical contractor, a professional, um, electrician in the field every day in and out of the grind doing homeowners jobs um, I wanted to show you what we're doing here for this video um, in a nutshell what was requested of us is that is it possible to come in and AFCI GFCI this panel so here are the steps we took first of all we looked at the job pulled the cover caught a quick glance and we already knew that when we see red and black, there's multi-circuit branch circuits, okay? So what that means is that some brands actually have, I know GE and I know Siemens, and I've actually put in the Siemens, and I had a dishwasher disposal test about two weeks ago. Breaker worked awesome. Did not have it trip back and forth, though I shared the neutral at the AFCI in the panel, and it was a two-pole double, kind of like you would see like this 20 amp here. So... First of all, you got to know what your code is, 21012. You got to know where it says that you have to have your arc faults implemented. Um, you can Google that, but it's going to be pretty common sense. Living room, bedrooms, hallways, laundry rooms, sunrooms, parlors, um, dining rooms, kitchens, and, ba and well, bath lighting, if that's shared with the bedroom. Um, I've heard, though, in the 2017 code, we're probably going to end up most likely doing garages and bathroom 110 dedicated plugs, um, maybe even crawl space attics, I don't know. So in a nutshell, um, we AFCI everything that was supposed to be. And the first thing you gotta do is you gotta come in and label where the circuits go. So we trace the house, you know, on a phone with another phone, on, off, on, off, made sure we had testers, plugs, beepers, whatever it took, hair dryers, radios, uh, lights are great, uh, lamps, make sure the, they're in the on position. And as you flick it, you gotta label the panel to the breaker. When you pull the cover though, you gotta know how you're counting. On the left is your odd and on the right is your even. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, all the way down to 2 to 30 there on the right. So once you do that, you can take and mark which breakers you know you have to AFCI, pull the cover, set it aside after we've already checked everything here, and then we go through and go, go what can we do? So if I had a, Q, a square DQO, which you know by the time you watch this video, they're probably gonna have one, but I have not found one as far as a square DQO, two-pole tie, multi-branch circuit for dishwasher disposal. In this case, I've got a bedroom upstairs and a master bath sharing. So they're sharing the neutral. So I can't. Um, I have a furnace and a sump pump, which to code does not have to be done. So I'm not worried about it. Um, but over here on the left side, I also have a, um, a disposal with the kitchen counter plugs. So they're both 20 amp circuits, 12 gauge aluminum. And um, over here, we're supposed to have that in there. So the other thing to mention to you in code, in 406.4D, somewhere around there, you're going to find that they say if you change out the plugs and the switches in most jurisdictions, not all, you have to arc fault that circuit for touching it. And I have one city that I won't say its name, but they said, well, if you pull the plug out and you extend the wires to do aluminum to copper, for, for instance, if you have an aluminum home, um, then you don't have to arc fault it. But the question is, is why would I be pulling the plug out in the first place unless this plug is really bad, broken, and or just not holding your typical transformer that you'd use for your phone or your Mac computer or your laptop. So we would have to pull that plug out, change it out, and put it back in, and then meet 406, I think it's dot eight or 10, where it says you have to have tamper proof. So why would I pull a plug out but not, and extend the wires, but not change the plug or the switch? So bottom line, if you're pulling the plug, you're supposed to arc fault now. In this case, um, they are selling the home. They're in Fort Collins. I won't give the name or address, but in a nutshell, they were requested for us to come in, and they had another electrician come in as well and look at it and say, okay, well, we've got aluminum, so we have to do pigtail copper splicing, 
and we have to do that throughout the house, and I'll do another video on that. But the other thing is, is that once we do that, what about the arc faults? Um, a lot of people say, well, they're grand it's grandfathered in. It, technically, it's not. If you're modifying, extending that circuit, and or changing things now, they want you to arc fault. So if this panel was a Zinsco or an FPE or Gould or a Bulldog or an old fuse screw-in type, like the Edison base, your panel's got to go. You can't set arc faults. Some guys will be like, okay, well, I'll take two little, three little panels here and I'll tap off and put a sub panel and then I'll arc fault my new circuits in. And before you know it, you got a, a wall of panels like pictures. I mean, you shouldn't do that. Um, and we don't typically tap off like that because, I mean, you got stuff that's already 100 years old or at that point at least 60 years old. Um, again, remember in electrical that cars have mileage odometers. Uh, your meter has even kilowatts. Your boat and your uh, RV may have just, you know, your, your hours on it. Electrical doesn't have mileage or hours or electrons flowing to tell you how many times it's been used past a certain point which would be designed or described in joules. But the bottom line is that there is no way to know other than, hey, the plastic's melting, the bus bar's burnt, um, this circuit's freaking out. And by that time, most people say to me nine times out of 10, hey, it's been working forever. Why is it tripping all of a sudden? Why don't you just come out and change out the breaker? Uh, the breaker's tripping because you have an issue on the backside. That's probably what's telling you something's wrong. So if you're overdrafting your checking account, you might have an overdraft protection to tell you, hey, you're gonna go into some fines here. Bottom line, the breaker's doing the same thing. You can't overdraft past the current allowed on that breaker. A lot of other phone calls say, hey, I've got a 15 amp in there, can I just put a 20? Or I got a 20, can I put a 30? Or a 30, can I put a 40? You can't keep upsizing it. The wire is based on its size, so you have to base it off of, uh, the breaker's based off, excuse me, the wire is based off of that breaker size. The breaker size protecting the wire so you don't have too much current flow on it. Um, anyways, last quick thing I want to show you about this, about arc faults, is so we went through this panel. The last step is put in all these arc faults, and we gave it a haircut because this, you know, God bless you electricians in the 70s. Um, I think you left extra wire like your hair, but they always folded the wires here. Um, this doesn't need to be in there. If you have an issue, you can always splice it back and bring it back in if that circuit has an issue. But this is just panel fold. You don't need that much extra in the panel. Makes it hard to trace circuits. Makes it, it doesn't even look clean. This circuit's hanging out because this is my only problem circuit. So today, um, we were supposed to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 arc faults. We were supposed to then only accomplish 10 today because four of them are gonna be that multi-circuit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna implement GFCI protection inside an AFCI, and I'll show you that in another video. Um, but for right now, I can't protect it at the panel unless I can find a square DQL multi-circuit like I told you. But this one is the problem circuit. So as I went through tracing, I was pulling out neutrals. I turned this circuit on and I would pull it out to see if another circuit would make it go off. Uh, for instance, if the dishwasher had to be going and I could hear it, I could pull that neutral in that mix of mess and go, oh, it turned off. So I knew that was my neutral. The code states you're supposed to braid these together or identify them with tape or identify them with numbers or identify them in a separate KO plug. So a lot of times when I do new construction or a basement, um, I put my wires in separate KOs and I cut them in. A KO cost me 10 cents. But it's a lifesaver if I'm tracing a circuit and I want to see that in the panel easier. So anyways, um, this right here has been a problem. We finally got everything done, cleaned up the panel, tucked it in, gave it a haircut. Everything's running before I've touched any of the switch and plugs. That's very important. Um, I will show you real quickly. So this circuit is now on. Come in here. So I wanted to use a hair dryer to make sure that it wasn't the fridge causing just the issue. As I touch my ground, there it is. I've got a back feed on the same ground out of that same circuit. So just to make sure it's not a hair dryer freaking out, I, I could plug in a coffee pot. If I plug in this coffee pot, 
There's no way three different items are going to have an issue with this circuit, okay? We'll turn this, well, we won't turn it on yet. Well, oh, it's already on. Okay. I'll reset the breaker, pump it. I'll come over and turn this thing on. Orange light on. I'll come over and turn on my ground. Trip. So the code states that at the first point of disconnect, which that panel is, the neutrals and the grounds are allowed to tie together in there. Um, so at first, I thought we had come over here. I thought we had an issue with the fridge. But I went ahead on purpose, after I traced the circuit, I knew that this circuit I was dealing with was circuit 24. You see that kick on? That light flickered just a hair. This is an old plug I'm gonna change, but this circuit is arc faulted. No issue. So this told me it wasn't the fridge. At first I thought, oh, maybe the fridge compressor. Uh-uh. Because if I go out here and reset this one more time, and I take my fridge and I plug it into this circuit over here, we didn't download circuit um, 18, I believe. Okay. Oh, 15. Anyways, I know that this circuit starts here on 15 for the microwave. It jumps to this counter, jumps to this counter, jumps to this fridge, and does my two nooks over here. Okay? As soon as I go touch this ground again, We've got an issue with that. So sometimes it's the neutrals from other circuits tied in a box. Most commonly, you'll look as electricians, you'll come to an area like this and go, boom, here's a two or three gain box. Power could be feeding up the stairs, then coming this way to the living room. Common sense though, closest to the panel. Typically people don't pull their wires to the other side of the room unless they have a purpose. But um, if you're doing a multi, or just a general branch circuit in 210.52, you're going to look and go, okay, it's probably going to start over there for that light for the garage. So the point is, is you're trying to find if two neutrals are tied, you can pull out neutrals on the panel, but I left that one circuit on in circuit 15 for this fridge, and I pulled out every other neutral on that panel, and nothing turned off that circuit to see if the neutral was back feeding. The other thing is that when you're doing your ground wire, the reason why I pulled this ground out is because the ground is uninsulated and it goes all the way back down the panel. It's touching the other bare grounds. You have to completely isolate it and make sure when you cut it in that there's nothing else touching there. So this is telling me that something's tied together. So what we did is we came in here just to this circuit because again, we knew to code where it was gonna go. We traced out the house already. We labeled the plates right here, which they're gonna change and we'll put a nice sticker on them. And then we went to the panel, changed out the arc faults, finished all the rest of the panel. Now we can isolate that circuit. And now right in here, look at what I found. Some guy mixes aluminum and copper on a plug. He takes and put a UF cable here. This is an outdoor rated 12 gauge UF cable for running like a pond pump. And then I see the same jacket over here. And guess what? It appears to me I've got a blue box, and the original boxes are fiberglass, brown, because they're all matched up to be like the step of the, the texture, the counter height, everything has not been changed. But one thing I noticed in here is that he got new counters. I'm thinking they might have cut the nails and moved the boxes up, but something got tied and moved because the range might be have changed its position too. We also looked to see if there was any kind of wall that might have moved here. Um, this is typically going to be ducting and plumbing through this, this box up here. A lot of people say, I'm going to take that box up and go 42 inch cabinets. Uh, no, you're not. Not that easy. Um, because a lot of the circuits, the plumbing, the HVAC can come through these channels up here. Um, but part of me thought this was added because there was never a plug over the counter back in the 70s like this. And he wanted it. So we pulled out the range.
and I see nothing that I would be concerned. Other than the fact that this return cold air right here goes on the other side of this fridge too. So my biggest concern is that if they have a splice, they've got it in the wall somewhere. But I'm going to do some more digging. I'm going to hopefully figure out what this is. Because if I don't, well, that means that 95% of a 1970s home, I truly arc faulted the whole panel according to, to code to the 2014. Uh, today is June 30th, almost, well, basically July 1st, 2016. Our code has changed.